Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days, and now we're getting into API testing. We've been through a lot already, so we've been through eight modules so far. We finished uh, with SQL introduction in the previous module, and now we're in module nine. We're getting into API testing. Now, this first video is going to be more uh, about theory and kind of introductory how it works and then in the next video we're going to get hands-on and actually doing some testing for the api and learning the tools how to do the testing right now what is api so api stands for application programming interface and an api is like a contract that allows different software programs to communicate with each other one software asks another software for specific information or actions, like asking for data from a website. API is like a conversation between two software programs that follow a set of rules that both programs understand. Most common API uh, you probably end up working with will be Web API, right? Web API is a set of rules and protocols that allows different software applications to communicate with each other over the Internet. It enables one software system to access and interact with the services, data, or functionalities of another system, often on a remote server. And in this diagram, you kind of see how this interaction happens. So a client, which would be like a browser or your, on your computer, or let's say your device, your handheld device, like a phone, that would be a client, sends a request to the server. Now, this request is structured within the API. So the API is this kind of communication, right? Uh, and then the server gets your API request. It knows how to transform that, interpret that. And then based on the request, it will send back API, uh, API response that your client will understand. So this communication is happening between client and server because of the API that is set in place. All right. Now, um, one of the most popular APIs, API approach is REST. So you're most likely going to be dealing with REST as a uh, tester. And REST API stands for Representational State Transfer. So it's a type of web API that follows a set of architectural principles and constraints. It is designed to create a simple and standardized way for software system to interact with each other over the internet. If API is using REST principles, uh, this API is considered to be RESTful. So REST APIs use standard HTTP methods to perform actions on resources. And HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's the language that web browsers and web servers use to talk to each other on the internet. Right. And we will get into more examples and we're going to get into like hands on stuff later on. But just for now, the theory to understand kind of understand how everything works, right? So uh, the primary HTTP methods uh, that are used are GET. So GET will allow a client to retrieve data from a server. POST, uh, this request will, uh, this method will allow to create a new data on the server. So create a new res resource. PUT, it will allow to update or replace an existing resource. Delete will allow to client to delete something uh, from the server and patch that will allow partially update a resource, right? So if you don't want to completely replace all the information, you want to update part of it, you'll set like a patch request uh, from your client to the server. Now, once the request is send, server will come up with a response and this response will include a status code, right? So let's take a look at those. So with an API request method, there is a response with a status code. HTTP status codes are three digit numbers returned by a web server in response to a client's request made to the server. They provide information about the result of the request and help both the client and server understand how to proceed. So, for example, if you get some sort of 100 code, that means it's informational. Uh, common 100 codes would be just plain 100, which means continue, or 101, which means switching protocols. The most common re response uh, code that you will see will be a 200, 200 something. So, 200 XX, meaning like any 200, if you get just plain 200, that means the response is okay you successfully retrieved the resource if you were doing 
post request creating something, you'll get back like 201, for example, saying confirming that you know it was actually created. If you'll get back a 300 uh, status code, that means you know it's some some sort of redirectional action happened. So, for example, 301 means that resource was moved permanently. If you get back a 400, that means some sort of a client error happened. And one of the most common ones for a 400 would be 404 not found. I mean, probably all of us at some point dealt with a 404, 404 error when you try to access a web page and you get it like, okay, resource is not there. And then uh, the worst one that you can get is a 500. 500 means that some error actually happened on the server and it wasn't handled properly and the server actually returned that error to the user. So 400 are kind of more acceptable errors. 500 means something's bad happening on the server. For example, uh, 500, plain 500 means internal server error happened. Maybe something crashed on the server, right? Okay, uh, now within the request, you'll have requests headers. And request headers are included in HTTP request that made by the client uh, to the server. They provide information about the request, the client, and data being sent. Some common request headers include user agent. So it describes the client application, such as web browser's name and version. Host. So specifies the domain name of the server being requested. Accept. Informs the server about the media types the client can understand, like specifying that it can accept HTML or JSON. Content type indicates the format of the data being sent in the request, such as JSON or HTML, XML. Authorization contains credentials or tokens for user authentication. Cookie carries information about the client's previous interactions with the server. Um, you also get a header in response, so response headers are part of the HTTP response sent by the server to the client in response to the client's request. They contain information about the server's response and how the client should handle it. Common response headers include content type, so specifying the format of the response. Status code, indicating the result of the request, for example, 200 OK for a successful response, right? Location, if you're directed to, uh, to tell the client where to find the requested resource. Cache control, provides instructions to the client regarding cache and helping with performance optimization. Set cookie, sends cookie to the client for storage, allowing the server to maintain stateful interactions. Uh, after the the header you might have a body of the actual request over response or response, right? So HTTP headers provide additional information about the request or response while the HTTP message body contains the primary data being transferred. So when a client wants to send data to a web server or a server wants to send data in response, they include a payload in the body of the HTTP. This data can take various forms such as HTML content, JSON data, XML data, file attachments, or any other information exchanged between the client and the server. Uh, so, But we will look at JSON as QA engineers primarily, uh, because that will be like most common data type that you will be verifying. And JSON stands for JavaScript object notation. Uh, as it is a widely used format for encoding data and it's particularly popular for web-based communication. So now this diagram will look something like this. So we'll have clients sending a request. Now this request will be an API right in, in between and it will have a header and a body in this request. And then the server gonna process that request and it will send a response back also with a header and a body. So some of the resources that I want you to check it out, so about HTTP request methods, I have the link in the files. Files are, this, this slides are available with Patreon, so if you want to check the actual and download all the slides, you can get to my Patreon, uh, and they down, they're available like with the basic level, but essentially I want you to check out methods. Um, I want you to check out page on the status codes. And I want you to check out this uh, page on working with JSON. Now, the JSON payload, how you're going to recognize the format, it will be uh, within the parentheses. And you will see 
key value pairs kind of right so you'll see first name for example and then uh alex and then last name and like usa this and you'll see them in quotes right so now let's take a look at some uh, request response briefly uh let's say we're getting we're on this page and this is the page that i'm recommending you to read so let's say working with jason right i'm gonna clear everything in the console uh, and then refresh the page as soon as i refresh the page uh the browser the client will send a request and the server will send a response and we will see in the networking tab all this communication happening so let me uh, refresh the page and you can see a bunch of 200 status codes some 304s happened uh there was no uh was blocked here so uh let's see methods like get get post different methods coming out so let's see one of the requests right here for example who am i that's like a very specific endpoint to who am i endpoint the request was made here and now we can start looking into it get some more details so here is our uh request header right uh here is our response header but then within the response, you will also have a body. So here's our JSON body. And I can take a look, say, in within this JSON body, there is specified details about the country and an actual country abbreviation, so US, right? Now, I can switch the view. This is kind of structured properly, but I can say raw and kind of see the raw file. And you can see this is this JSON, the same JSON, the, the payload response is coming back just like that and here we have uh, geolocation within that geolocation we have country united states and country uh, iso united states right and some other details are not filled like like username no authentication no email you see there's email and there is null for email value so that means there's like no data so what qa engineers will do they will actually verify um api they will do requests they will look at the response they will look at the response payload and they will compare the request and response uh, structure against the actual api documentation to make sure that everything is correctly uh, structured everything is coded correctly you get the proper responses the proper values back uh, if you try to trigger specific error you get the correct error message back so we will be doing that in the next video so this was like an introduction but then we will learn the tool postman actually how to do some api testing all right so this was alex usa days hopefully this video is helpful like and subscribe for more and bye bye